Good afternoon. I'm Jeremy Patch, Director of Patient Programs and Education here at Zero, the End of Prostate Cancer. Thank you for joining us for today's Zero Live. I'm joined today by Dr. Jonathan Coleman, a urologist at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York. Dr. Coleman is here to discuss clinical trials and in particular, the new PRESERVE study, which was initiated by Angiodynamics. Welcome, Dr. Coleman. Thanks, Jeremy. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, thanks for having me. So Dr. Coleman, we know that clinical trials are incredibly important, but sometimes they can be scary or confusing for patients to fully understand. Can you give us a quick overview of clinical trials and how they can benefit prostate cancer patients listening today? Sure, I'd be glad to. And, uh, and thanks to, thank you for the opportunity to kind of talk about clinical trials. I think it's very important. Um, you know, the, the whole field of medicine is really uh, has developed uh, based on, you know, process of, of experience of treating patients in, in you know, for a variety of different cancers and conditions over time. Um, and all of us, all, all doctors uh, have developed sort of pathways of care that are based on best practices. Uh, and that's what we, we seek to, to provide to our patients that is the very best possible care. Um, in order for us to, to move care forward, in order for us to, to, to better provide better care, either uh, you know, we're stuck providing the same old care we've always done, or we start experimenting or looking at new ways of doing things. And those new ways of doing things are best addressed, not sort of in a haphazard manner, but really through a, a scientific process of, of studying those new methods and then developing them as a, a comparison to the existing methods that we currently have. So for any patient to really, you know, uh, most patients look to get the very best care, the very latest care, the, the newest advances in care in order for us to develop those and, and to provide them to patients, um, the best way to do that is through clinical trials. And so your doctors, uh, wherever you may be, will sit down, develop or devise a, a program uh, of a, a new therapy that they think is uh, beneficial and then they will offer that therapy to you or to, to eligible patients through the process of, of a clinical trial. So I always tell patients, you know, if, if you want the very best care, uh, the best way to, to try and address the newest and the latest uh, care that's available is to look for what clinical trials are out there because all of them are designed to be better than, than the current standards that, that are, are being used around the country. That's good advice. How do patients find out more information about clinical trials and if they might be eligible for a particular clinical trial? Also a great question. Um, you know, the internet is, a, is an amazing space now and that's where a lot of patients will turn. Um, unfortunately, the internet can also be full of misinformation, uh, especially about medical care. Uh, patients will find their way into forums and different places where people are telling them, this is what I had done by somebody and this is, you know, what I advise you to do, but uh, those people aren't medical care professionals. Uh, so uh, what I tell patients is, um, you know, the, the best place to kind of start that search is through like an internet search through something like clinicaltrials.gov. It's all one word, clinicaltrials.gov. Uh, that's where all clinical trials are listed and you can search for them there. Uh, you can also ask your doctor, uh, ask your physician and say, is there, are there any clinical trials that you know of that I might be eligible for? Uh, or what clinical trials do you think uh, I should be looking at? Um, and your doctor can also sort of direct you in that process as well. Um, but yeah, I, I would advise you to be very careful about some of the internet uh, you know, advice which is out there, especially in certain forums, um, because uh, you, know, uh, you, you may be misled or, or go down certain pathways uh, that are gonna uh, not be helpful for you. Dr. Coleman, you're a co-principal investigator for the PRESERVE study, which evaluates the use of the NanoKnife system as a focal therapy option for prostate cancer patients. Tell us, what is focal therapy? So uh, focal therapy is, uh, I, I used to say it was a new, newly developed uh, treatment, but the reality is it's been around for a long time now. Uh, the idea behind focal therapy is very similar to the idea that's behind any type of partial gland or partial organ treatment. Um, so uh, if you say had a, a tumor in your kidney, instead of having your entire kidney removed, you might have just a portion of the kidney removed to take the tumor out and leave the rest of the anatomy there. Same is true for things like breast cancer, like a lumpectomy for breast cancer. And in the prostate gland, 
now that we're doing um, more uh, sort of widespread screening for prostate cancer and we're finding more aggressive cancers earlier, we're now able to find some types of aggressive cancer when they're still very small, which asks the question, uh, do we really need to treat the entire prostate gland with a, a treatment like removing it with surgery or radiating it with radiation therapy? And can we treat just a portion of the prostate gland to destroy just the tumor, preserve some of the normal tissue, and also preserve a uh, patient's quality of life in terms of sexual and urinary function? Um, and so uh, from the standpoint of an organ sparing option for prostate cancer, uh, focal therapy offers the opportunity for a, a localized or very small portion of the prostate gland to be treated to eradicate the tumor and leave normal tissue behind. Good to know. Thank you. Can you tell us about the NanoKnife system and what might make this a good option for patients? Yeah, so um, there are a number of options out there for treating, a, say, a small part of the prostate gland or small parts of, of organs. Uh, one uh, option I've been asked about many times is, uh, well, you know, gee, you're a surgeon, can't you just remove a part of my prostate gland? Can't you go in surgically and just chop out that one area? And uh, that's been tried before. That's been done in the past. And the, the problem that we've seen with that approach is that, uh, that the side effects of, of uh, that type of surgery can be just as debilitating as having the entire prostate gland removed. And so you're not really saving yourself uh, from some of the quality of life outcomes that you're worried about. Uh, and so the question is, is there a, a different way of going in and, and destroying the tumors that are there without having to go through, say, a, an aggressive surgical approach or an aggressive um, uh, you know, treatment approach that could you know, sacrifice some of the quality of life that you're trying to preserve? So there are a number of different technologies that have been developed for this. Uh, one is something called cryosurgery or cryotherapy to freeze parts of the prostate gland. Another one is called high fluor or high intensity focused ultrasound to, to sonicate or use ultrasound energy to destroy parts of the prostate tissue. Um, and there's another that's used as a laser, which uh, is used to burn tissue inside the prostate. The problem with those types of approaches is that they involve thermal treatments, either heating or freezing the tissue. And it's sometimes very hard to control those types of thermal energies in, in organ systems and in tissues because the, the, the way the temperature changes are going to occur is, is sometimes uh, unpredictable. And it can also extend itself outside the margins of the prostate gland and damage some of the surrounding structures if you're not careful. So uh, the nanonife system uses a form of electrical-based energy uh, to basically uh, deliver very high voltage uh, energy fields inside the prostate gland. And because the prostate is surrounded by uh, fatty tissue surrounding the prostate, that fatty tissue acts like, like an insulator. So that way the electricity really can't go outside the margins of the prostate gland. And so by using this therapy, by putting these small electrodes into the prostate and using electrical energy uh, to, to kill portions of the prostate gland, not only can you uh, really shape the field so that it stays within the prostate, but it's also a non-thermal therapy. So it doesn't rely on heat to kill the tissue. It uses electrical, the electrical field, the, um, the high voltage field that is encased within the uh, electrical uh, probes that are placed, um, undergo something called depolarization, which means that it depolarizes the cell membranes in the tissue. And so that it doesn't involve heating or burning the tissue or freezing it. It depolarizes the cell membrane so that those cells just simply lice and break open, and then the cancer cells uh, will die by that by that uh, by that process. Um, there's also some studies that suggest that it can uh, is relatively sparing to surrounding tissues such as the urethra, nerve tissues, and some uh, vascular tissues. So some of those normal tissues may be spared by this approach uh, because, as I said, it's a non-thermal therapy, and so. Um, so that gives you some advantages in terms of treating, uh, you know, specific areas inside the, the, the prostate while sparing some of the surrounding tissues from damage. Thank you for that. What are you hoping to achieve from the PRESERVE study? So the PRESERVE study uh, looks at, at two main outcomes um, that we're most concerned with when it comes to treating men with prostate cancer. The, the key outcome is to make sure that the cancer is treated. So we wanna make sure that there's no residual cancer after these patients are, are, are undergo their uh, therapy. 
And so for that reason, men undergo a biopsy after the procedure, usually within a year's time, to make sure that uh, there's no residual cancer inside their prostate gland. We also use MRIs of the prostate to look at the effects that are occurring inside the prostate tissue and make sure that we don't see any cancer on an MRI study. So, so that's the main outcome, and that is to make sure that the cancer is eradicated, or if not fully eradicated, at least it's controlled. In other words, the bad parts of the cancer have been treated. And while it may sound strange to talk about good parts of cancer, um, when it comes to prostate cancer, there are certain types of low-grade changes or low-grade tumors um, that really don't warrant any therapy at all. And so um, we want to make sure that the bad cancer has been removed and that the rest of the tissue which is left behind uh, is not threatening to the patient in terms of uh, a cancer risk. The other main thing that we worry about when it comes to prostate cancer treatment uh, specifically, and that's quality of life. Uh, men who undergo treatments for prostate cancer uh, are threatened by uh, the risk of things like urinary dysfunction, such as urinary leakage, which we call incontinence, um, or uh, urinary obstructive symptoms or frequency symptoms that can be debilitating, meaning you know, men have to get up at night to go to the bathroom because they're not emptying their bladder all the way, or they have to go to the bathroom frequently during the day uh, because of some damage which has occurred to their prostate, say from a treatment like radiation therapy. So we wanna look at uh, quality of life outcomes like urinary function, and we also wanna look at sexual function uh, to make sure that men can maintain the ability to have normal erections and normal sexual function uh, after therapy. <clears throat> now, the only way to avoid any type of side effects when it comes to uh, treatment for prostate cancer is to not be treated. So if patients come to me and they say, well, I wanna have focal therapy because I don't wanna risk any change to my urinary function or sexual function, I'm always very careful to, to explain to them that, you know, even putting a needle into your prostate gland or doing anything to your prostate uh, poses a risk that you may have some uh, side effects, including changes in urinary function or sexual function. But our goal with this therapy is to minimize those effects so that the patients don't have severe debilitating effects. So, um, so for men who are really interested in, you know, per maximally preserving quality of life without any changes, I tell them, you need to go down a pathway of active surveillance, which means watching and monitoring your cancer. But for men who say, well, uh, I feel comfortable with that pathway of active surveillance and watching my tumor, um, and I know that this cancer is somewhat risky, um, I would rather uh, do something about this tumor and be a little more proactive, but surgery and radiation seem like those are overkill, then I would say, um, if you meet the criteria for this trial, uh, which is very specific, and I'll discuss that in a minute, but if you meet criteria for this trial, this is an opportunity to treat this tumor while minimal, with having minimal effects uh, on, on urinary and sexual function, but it doesn't mean zero effect. It means a, lo a lower risk. So we're interested in looking at, again, sexual function and urinary function outcomes. Okay, good, thank you. Can you tell us more about who is eligible for and who should consider the PRESERVE study? So as I mentioned before, um, this is a, a, a treatment which is very specific for a certain type of, of patient. I have a lot of men who come to see me for focal therapy options, and many of them I have to tell them that uh, unfortunately the type of tumor that you have is not the type of tumor that would be appropriate for this type of therapy. Um, what we're looking for are certain types of cancers with, that we call intermediate risk prostate cancer uh, that are small and localized in one portion of the prostate gland. So I often sort of explain to patients that this is a little bit like um, having a water pistol and being able to put out a candle on a cake. And so um, using something that's very focused and very direct to be able to, to specifically treat one small little tiny tumor is what we're trying to accomplish here. If you bring me a, a, a cake that's full of candles, my water pistol's uh, likely to make quite a mess out of things if I'm trying to treat all those different areas and I'm not likely to be able to, to do, uh, to, to provide the outcome that you're looking for by trying to treat too much tissue uh, with any of these uh, focal therapy approaches. Um, so these are uh, specifically what we call uh, intermediate risk prostate cancer. That's a Gleason grade total score of seven or what we call Gleason uh, component three plus four or four plus three prostate cancers. Um, these tumors have to be visible on an MRI. So that means that we have an MRI study that shows there's a focal lesion inside the prostate gland that we can clearly identify with an MRI study. That allows us 
be able to specifically target that area because we know exactly where the tumor is based on the MRI. We also have to confirm that that area is the site of cancer. So that means we have to do a biopsy of that area and confirm that that MRI lesion is in fact tumor. And we also have to confirm that there's not more aggressive cancer in other areas of the prostate outside of that area. Because if I only treat that one area and kill the cancer there, and yet miss a cancer somewhere else inside the prostate gland, then I'm not going to be providing a, a good therapy for my patients because I'm leaving cancer behind. Um, so the thing that patients need to be aware of is that there are some strict criteria for this type of a study. Um, they have to have the right type of a cancer, either three plus four or four plus three. They have to have a nodule that's seen on MRI. That nodule has to be confined to one region of the prostate gland. It can't be in multiple different areas. And there can't be any evidence that the cancer has spread outside the prostate. So there can't be extra capsular extension or tumor growing outside the margins of the prostate. Your time. <clears throat> we encourage you to go to our website to learn more about clinical trials, where you can also search for clinical trials that may be right for you. There you can also find more information on the PRESERVE study. We'll drop that link in the comment section in Facebook. Also, we want to remind you that the Zero Prostate Cancer Summit is February 26th through the 28th next year. There's both an in-person option, which we're excited for, and a virtual option. Head over to zerocancer.org to learn more, and we'll drop that link in the comments too. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day. And thank you, Dr. Coleman. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure being able to uh, discuss this uh, trial and discuss some of the therapy op therapeutic options that are available for our patients that are out there. So it's not always a one size fits all approach. And uh, I think offering tailored therapies and, and options to our patients, especially through uh, clinical trials uh, is an important part of, uh, of cancer care these days. And, uh, and it's a, a pleasure to work with uh, organizations like yourself who are trying to bring you know, this information to patients. So thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you. It's good information. Bye.